name is Jeff Reeser, and I'm I'm kind of filling in uh, to do this presentation uh, as part of the Open Mainframe project, uh, part of the Linux Foundation, and uh, happy to do so. Uh, SUSE, I work for SUSE. Uh, we are members of the Open Mainframe project, and we're very active in a lot of the communities that are uh, being shown here at the Open Source Summit. So uh, happy to be here. And uh, before I get into uh, the main topic here, I wanted to uh, provide some relevance for uh, talking about my own journey, my own career journey uh, over the past, believe it or not, 40 years. I can't believe that either. Um, but for me, I actually started uh, way back in the last century <laughs> with a college degree in astrophysics. And at the time, um, there were not many jobs available for someone with an astrophysics degree. I, I was offered a job by studying the atmosphere of Venus for two years. Um, but after my two years was up, it would have been really interesting, but who knows where it would have gone after that. So I ended up um, going where the money was at the time, which was at IBM. And I started uh, doing development. I did a lot of uh, programming in Assembler, if you're familiar with what Assembler is, um, in VM, uh, Virtual Machine, uh, CP, which is Control Program at the time. So uh, a long history there. And VMCP actually still exists today, uh, maybe running some of my code, which is why it's so super reliable. <laughs> um, uh, I then moved into uh, Java, uh, Java 2 Enterprise Edition. Uh, Enterprise Java means uh, for persistent uh, memory, persistent storage, and, and it was very interesting work. Worked a lot with uh, Sun Microsystems at the time <coughs> before they, uh, they merged in with uh, someone else. And I, I was responsible for WebSphere, which was uh, a web marketing uh, product that worked across the S390X um, or mainframe uh, based architecture as well as x86. So a lot of experience in, in programming that and architecting what WebSphere was all about at that time. Uh, then moved into uh, data compression, pervasive encryption, got a little bit of experience in the security areas. Uh, which has uh, grown to be top of mind in so many places around the world today uh, with the prevalence of cyber attacks. I started working with SUSE Linux back in 1999 uh, when they first started partnering with IBM and uh, was involved in SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for IBM Z Systems, which was uh, S390X based. Um, uh, we did some things specifically for the, the mainframe environment at the time. I officially uh, retired from IBM in 2011, so I had been there for 30 years. So as soon as I reached 30 years, I, I ended up looking around and found a, a place to go called Progress Software. Took the weekend off, then started that progress and worked on uh, open database connectivity in the cloud at the time. So. Four years later, I moved to a company called LexisNexis uh, for a short time before getting the opportunity to really work at SUSE. So I've been at SUSE now for six years, and I continue to work with the Open Mainframe Project community uh, because of my experience in the past with the mainframes. <coughs> and now able to share my, my S390X experiences uh, with the community. And what this session is really all about is with the next generation of programmers coming up. Uh, what opportunities exist for uh, the new programmers, the next generation? Uh, there are still opportunities in the mainframe world, and it's not something that people hear about a lot. I mean, nobody goes into uh, college these days and think of, they think about, oh, I want to get a job with, with mainframes when I get out of here. That's not top of mind for a lot of people, but still, the opportunities exist, and when you're writing um, uh, cloud native applications today or uh, other kinds of workloads today, you have to be aware of all the environments where your applications might run, where your workloads might run. It could be on an S390X, uh, very possibly. 
there are still a lot of mainframes out there today. Uh, a lot of them are in uh, banks and financial uh, services uh, companies. Uh, so a lot of the transaction-oriented processing uh, takes place on mainframes around the world. Uh, mainframes actually control a lot of the transactions that are going on around the world. If something were to happen with uh, S390, uh, the world would be uh, hurting <laughs> in, in a lot of ways. So, so it's, when you're writing applications today, you always have to be cognizant of where possibly uh, those applications might be running across x86, at the edge, on mainframes, um, across the board. So there are opportunities out there. Uh, technology today, it adapts to what the businesses need. Infrastructure is turning into a very hybrid, multi-cloud, very fluid kind of environment. And you also have to be aware of that too when you're writing the applications. Uh, there's uh, also the sense of microservices. Microservices could be uh, running anywhere. When you're building uh, a cloud-native application within containers, the containers could be, say, Python-based, and, and you're, you're providing some microservices within that container as well. Uh, you might be using some immutable-type OS, and, and then you're building out those containers across many different platforms all managed by, say, Kubernetes. Uh, we've done some work in the mainframe environment uh, to uh, ensure that Kubernetes works in that environment too. And um, you know, might see a little bit later, there's, there's some instances where we have Kubernetes running. Uh, Rancher, if you're familiar with Rancher, is, is uh, our uh, cloud native uh, application. It has a Kubernetes engine. It has some tools and facilities to help manage containers and containerization of applications. And uh, we just recently um, had that working on in the mainframe environment on IBM Z systems. And if you're, not, if you're not familiar with what a mainframe looks like, it's actually, there's a, a great um, uh, framework of a Linux One box down in the IBM booth in, in the showcase, if you want to take a look at that. But open source, uh, even in the mainframe world, it's becoming the connective thread. It's what ties everything that we're doing together, and it's becoming uh, so important to any business that's out there. And mainframe has started, uh, I mean, 50 years ago. It's started with these design principles, always around security. And this is a secure software supply chain, it's uh, secure common criteria certifications. It's uh, pervasive encryption, uh, database encryption, everything that's done within the framework uh, of the mainframe and supporting um, many different kinds of applications and environments and cloud environments that are running on top of the mainframe. So security, availability, scalability, and performance, of course. Um, so it's... And, and those principles have existed uh, for this long. It's been, become a super resilient, super secure platform um, and supporting a lot of the progr modern programming languages of today. So what's, what's really made it interesting? So there's been a, a surge, really, of investment in the mainframes. And this points to a recent survey that was done that says... Um, uh, organizations expect to increase the frequency of new mainframe application feature deployments. And a, a lot of this might be driven by some of the main customers of mainframes, like financial institutions uh, that are looking at this. They're looking at um, FinTech, and there's a community called Finos, uh, Financial uh, Technology OS for, um, for banking, for finance. And uh, there are some really interesting projects happening right now uh, with things like Rancher uh, in order to use that in an open source environment at banks. Uh, so lots of interesting work going on right now for that. Uh, security, top of mind, uh, especially in banks and fraud detection and everything that they're doing uh, in these uh, swirly times. Uh, also, 
it, it's being adopted in the DevOp, DevOps area as well. Now, mainframe development itself, as I said early on in my career, I programmed in assembler and, uh, and machine language, which is not machine learning by any means, but it's mach machine language, which was um, pretty intense. Uh, today, we have Python and Java and Rust and well supported on the mainframe. And uh, one of the carryovers from uh, the golden days of the mainframe is COBOL. And COBOL development it has a, a resurgent uh, kind of view that's being used more and more today. Uh, it can be done with tools like Visual Studio and Eclipse. And there's uh, something that came out of the open mainframe project community called Zoe. And what Zoe does, it provides uh, a nice graphical user interface for ZOS, which was the main uh, proprietary system that uh, was used on IBM Z systems. So it provides some nice desktop tools to help uh, put together some of these new programs. As far as mainframe jobs go, they're they are plentiful. There are, are quite a few out there. Um, it's not something that's uh, in your face kind of thing, but if you go out looking for mainframe jobs, you'll be able to find them. They can be very lucrative. Uh, there's, uh, they have some pretty decent salaries, uh, starting salaries for this. And the reason for this is that, yeah, mainframe still exists. It's, it's on an architecture that is so resilient and secure that it's, it's lasted this long and and banks and, and other big uh, companies still use them. But the skills level, there's a huge skills gap because the people that were, uh, were in tune with this uh, 40 years ago are on their way out the door. They're retiring and, and uh, they need to refresh uh, the skills, the skills gap here. And that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's really one of the reasons why Open Mainframe Project is in existence. How do we close that skills gap? And that's really where uh, we come along with this new community. The community has been in place for almost five years now. So at the Open Mainframe Project, we really believe that uh, organizations want to leverage their technology as a competitive advantage uh, on mainframes. And we continue with the design principles that were set forth uh, 40 years ago, security, scalability, performance, <coughs> and, uh, and there's been a lot of technical advances along the way for the mainframe to ensure that open source works in this environment as well. There's a whole landscape of various projects that have been uh, incubated and started with the open mainframe project. Uh, I made this chart uh, unreadable so, but there's a lot of projects here and I have some links at the very end that point to this landscape where you can go in to look at more detail at any one of these projects uh, that are involved in automation or security or analytics um, on the mainframe uh, using various languages, various runtimes. And they're, they're always looking for um, starting up new projects as well that are related to this. So the Open Mainframe Project vision has always been to um, uh, be an essential part of modernizing enterprise IT, uh, understanding that uh, when you build workloads today, most likely you're going to be needing to run on a wide variety of different platforms, including the mainframe. So we, we want to make it consumable for mainstream developers uh, and users as well, and all in the name of open source. So here's a list of some of the projects that are ongoing right now. We have some active, very active projects like, like I mentioned, Zoe, and I'll get to uh, mentorship uh, as well. Uh, we have some projects that are in the incubation phase uh, where they're trying to drum up some uh, some interest and some support and some new members. Things like uh, Fei Long uh, on the second column, uh, the last column on the right, 
Um, Phalong is a ZVM connector to the cloud. It uses OpenStack, um, and they ha they meet regularly and, and talk about uh, what they can do in the future and, and what kind of GitHub uh, activities are involved there for for any any one of these incubation projects. Um, Sandbox and there's some working groups as well for COBOL for Linux distributions. So interesting, uh, good uh, collection of projects and and this is just a subset of everything that I showed on that landscape chart. Now, one of the problems that uh, was recognized by the Open Mainframe project early on was the need to replenish this aging workforce that, that they had to deal with. And they needed to uh, reinforce it with more talent, more skilled professionals, uh, with so many people involved in programming uh, at the time, had, how about um, educating them on what to do in the mainframe environment to, in the name of security and scalability and performance. So it was launched uh, two years ago in 2020, and it basically offers a simple education platform. Uh, anyone can go out and uh, look up the materials, uh, go through some of the webinars that are provided, uh, understand more uh, how to deal with uh, this other platform uh, that you most likely will, will see at some point, um, especially if you're doing some global business in the financial area. So there's a, a new Gitbook resource as well uh, that's available, and I have links to all of these at, at the very end of the session uh, as well if you want to uh, uh, take a look. And and it basically makes it easier to uh, and more accessible for any of this um, for anyone who, who wants to learn more. Oh, here are some links. Don't have to wait till the end. Uh, explore on, on Gitbooks. Uh, you can connect with other users and developers on Slack. There's a Slack channel <laughs> that I'm on that a number of uh, us, well, everyone in the community is, is, a, is on and available. Some good discussions that are available out there. And you can sign up uh, for it as well. And uh, this whole deck is, it will be available or is available in the repository. Um, so you can uh, take a look at the, at the links uh, when at your convenience. The second problem um, that the Open Mainframe Project uh, took a look at was enabling innovation and modernizing COBOL. A COBOL uh, was used in the the golden days, like I said, um, and it's it's uh, being recognized again today, uh, being used. Uh, more heavily today as well. And COBOL talent, it's, it's really an important to what we're seeing happening in the programming world right now. Uh, the need for it was kind of amplified uh, during the pandemic. Um, and so this community really wants to enable the next generation to uh, have the COBOL skills uh, to get involved in this. So we innovated on launching a COBOL programming course uh, as a start. Uh, for some, it might be a refresher course. For some, it might be just brand new. Um, so, so we can check that out too if you're interested in, in uh, COBOL programming. And there are ways to get involved uh, with this as well. There's a forum, there's a discussion group, a, a working group for COBOL. And, and COBOL, because it's uh, a more transaction-oriented programming uh, language, uh, it's, it's uh, heavily involved in some of the security and fraud detection aspects that you might see out there, um, and uh, financial aspects too. The third major problem was um, getting good mainframe talent. Uh, again, because of the aging, tenured uh, mainframe talent that was retiring or uh, moving on to uh, different areas, uh, there was a skills decline. So what we did within the Open Mainframe Project was start a mentorship program. 
uh, and this has worked out really well. Every summer we end up having uh, five, six, uh, ten different interns at various companies, and these are uh, all of the member companies in Open Mainframe Project participate in this. At SUSE, we had a mentor uh, a few years ago uh, that was with us for the summertime, and he was involved in uh, Kubernetes on Z. And it worked out so well, he gained a lot of experience. And at the end of the summer, we ended up hiring him. And he was able to come on board. Uh, still worked on some mainframe stuff, but he was able to branch out and, and work on some other things. He's still at SUSE uh, right now, and, and it's been really uh, productive for him and, and really eye-opening uh, for a lot of people that, uh, that we, could, we could do this and bring in interns. And, and the other member companies have done this as well. Uh, IBM has done this successfully, um, uh, and, and the other member companies too. So it's, it's worked out really well. We're going to continue with the mentorship uh, program. And uh, you can see the results on the right-hand side. Uh, some of the work includes ports of Alpine Linux, uh, contributions to OpenStack, Hyperledger, uh, Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes, and, and a lot more. So it's, it's uh, touching on the relevant topics that are out there today in a mainframe environment. And some pictures of... Um, some of the mentees and mentors uh, that have been through the, the summer program. Uh, over over the last five years, we've had about 60-plus uh, men mentees uh, from the sponsoring companies. Um, and, well, really about 100, 100 different students that have been through the program. And they end up uh, presenting what they've done during the summer uh, to a committee. Uh, with an open mainframe project and and uh, then they go on it's a good thing to put on the resume and it's also a good thing for the sponsoring companies to uh, kind of bring in some new talent and this as an example uh, we uh, one of the companies brought in uh, Salasu Ali uh, on the right hand side there in the spring of 2020 and uh, he ended up uh, working on a project that involves Zoe, uh, which I had mentioned earlier, that's the uh, uh, graphical user interface for ZOS. And he was really successful at it. Um, he did a great job. He learned a lot, too. And he ended up uh, passing on his great experience to his brother on the left-hand side, Muhammad Ali. And, um, and so they both were able to... Uh, experience a, a wide variety of different opportunities after they completed their mentor a mentorship so it was um, it was very very useful and that's what the open mainframe project is really all about being able to enable innovation through community building uh, things like mentorship things like education and and you can see well it's been seven years since since it launched uh, these are all the, the member companies today. You see SUSE on the bottom here. Um, you see uh, uh, big names in the mainframe business like Rocket Software and BMC, uh, IBM. Uh, but you also see uh, some other big names in finance like ADP and, and uh, some universities here too. Uh, so... It's a it's a very it's a close knit community, and it's also a very productive community with uh, the amount of mentorship that goes on, project contributions that have been happening, and the and the contributors. I just want to mention too, there is an open mainframe summit that's uh, put on by this same community. It's happening next week. Um, for all of you in Dublin, if you happen to be in Philadelphia next week, it's, that's, that's where it's at. So um, we're looking forward to that. And it's just another way to bring some education out to, uh, uh, to the new mainframers that, are, that might be out there. And we've also had some podcasts. Uh, Stephen Dickens uh, hosts these podcasts now. 
that they're done on a regular basis. Uh, Steven was at IBM for a long time uh, with uh, Linux One, and um, uh, now he works for an analyst called Futurum. But uh, he's he's very good at at uh, uh, interviewing uh, some of the big people in in the mainframe business over time. So he has uh, a wide collection of, of really good. Uh, uh, speakers that have been through this. And uh, this community, uh, like a lot of communities today, there's growing diversity and inclusion is really important to what they're they're doing here and um, and uh, what they're doing in the mainframe world with the Open Mainframe Project. You can read more about uh, diversity in the mainframe business at uh, one of the blogs that's pointed to here. And along those same lines, uh, uh, over 35% of the Open Mainframe Project leadership is female. And, and you can see uh, a, a good list of females here. I'm sorry the print is tiny, but um, uh, there are folks like, I know Stacy, Stacy Miller is here. Uh, she's up, up there too. And there's, there's a lot of uh, leadership in the community uh, that's female-based and um, uh, doing some really good work there. Um, there are a lot of ways that we're trying to bring together the open source and the mainframe conversations. Uh, we do this through forums, the uh, openmainframeproject.org uh, site um, has a lot of information and the blog area as, as well. There are some things that we put out on YouTube and the, the Slack channel is probably the best way that people can start just to uh, look at the group. Uh, observe some of the conversations, some of the interactions, and um, kind of uh, grease the skids and, and get you familiar with, with what they're doing. And then there are ways to contribute to all of the projects uh, that you see out on the, the landscape for the Open Mainframe Project. Uh, there's um, technical working groups, there's a technical steering committee, uh, so there's a lot of ways that people can contribute and just get involved in some of these projects. And again, some, some ways that uh, we can foster more participation or interest in mainframe when it comes to open source. Uh, this, is, this is the future of, the, of uh, what uh, IBM is doing with Linux One, uh, what some of these big companies are, are doing. Uh, with the mainframe architecture. You can learn a lot more about the Open Mainframe Project, the whole community, at openmainframeproject.org. Like I said, the, uh, the second link there uh, where you can see the breadth of all of the open so source projects on the mainframe, um, that's an L at the beginning. It looks kind of weird, but that's an L.openmainframeproject.org. The L stands for landscape. And you can take a look at uh, all of the hosted projects that are out there and, and take part in some of the events, some of the webinars. It, it could be really interesting and, and for the next gen, uh, a good way to uh, beef up the skills. And that's it. So yeah, we were able to finish in 30 minutes, so that's, that's good. So. Um, if you have any questions at all or any any comments, I'm open. I'll, I'll be here for a few more. Yeah. Um, uh, how, what's the, do you have uh, any statistics about what percentage of companies still have a mainframe, or, or if you get sense of that one? Um, good question. Uh, last stats I heard on that was that most of the top 100 financial institutions. Um, had, I can't give you a, a quantifiable number, okay. but uh, most of them still do. Okay. Uh, and, but they, they've all branched out and they have all these other environments and, and cloud environments they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. In most cases, um, at the banks that I worked with, uh, they, have, they have a mainframe uh, internally that they use a very secure environment but when they're interacting with their customers, their clients, they use the cloud, and the cloud is maybe on some other, some other platform. But, but
but um, most of the transactions and, and all of the things that need to be secure and, and scalable are on the mainframe. I, know, I think some of the stats that you might be looking for are on the open mainframe project side. Oh. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Stacy. Yeah. The mentorships, um, they can go to uh, the the question. I'll just repeat the question. So where, where can someone, a younger programmer, go to uh, to find out more about the uh, Linux Foundation mem mentorships? And for, for this project, if you go out to uh, the openmainframeproject.org site, there's a lot of information about the mentorships there and, and some pointers to, to where you can get started with that. Okay. Yes. Uh, with bringing modern programming languages to mainframes, do you think Cobol might be trying these new things? Well, uh, we saw uh, more interest of it during the pandemic, um, for whatever reason. Uh, now that uh, we're entering kind of a new phase, we might. <laughs> it, it, it might go back. But um, at least for right now, we're seeing a, a, a lot of interest uh, just uh, because of the transactional nature of it. You, you mentioned there was a course on COBOL that you could provide. Yes. Is that in that sort of the Getting Started, or is it just kind of something that's very readily available? It is. It's, it's a great way to get started with it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's available out there. Anything else? All right, well, thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate it.